I have made a ton of SQL Alchemy videos over the past 10 years, but there's one problem. They're all outdated. And the reason why is because both Python and SQL Alchemy have undergone major changes in the last few years. So in this video, you'll learn how to write modern SQL Alchemy in your Python projects. You'll learn the latest SQL Alchemy styles for both creating models and writing queries. And even though you can get away with writing the old style of SQL Alchemy for now, you should want to future-proof your code so it never becomes outdated. So first, let me show you the old version of SQL Alchemy. So here we have this create engine, and the idea is we just create a connection to our database, in this case, SQLite, and then we need to create this base class. So in the old style of SQL Alchemy, you use this function, declarative base, and it returns a class, and then you can inherit from this class in all your models. So we see I have it here in my user model and post model. Then inside of the model, you define a table name, so that's the same. And then you define the columns or the attributes. So in this case, I have an ID, name, and last login. ID is a primary key. Name is a string. It's nullable is false, so you have to have a name. Whereas last login is a date time, but nullable is not false, meaning you don't have to supply a last login. And then I have a relationship to post that back populates user, which we'll see in post in just a second. Inside of post, I have the same thing. I have some attributes defined that represent columns. Here I'm using a text data type for content. I'm saying nullable is false for all of them, so they are all required. And I have this user relationship. And then I also have this foreign key on user ID back to the user model. So this style of defining your attributes or your columns is going to change a lot in SQL Alchemy 2, which I'll show you in a second. So then you have to create all the tables by calling this create all. And then you have to create a session. So in the old SQL Alchemy, you have to import the session maker function, pass it your engine. Then you get a session class that you can instantiate. And then you can use that session to do things. So in this case, I'm creating two users, Anthony and Kim. I'm saying that Kim has a last login, whereas Anthony doesn't. I'm adding them both to the session and I'm committing both. Then I'm creating five posts. And then I'm appending those posts to my users. So Anthony gets three posts and Kim gets two posts. I'm committing. And then down here, I have some queries. So one query is to get all the users, just printing them out. Another query is to get one user, Anthony. Another query is to get Kim by looking for the name Kim. And then finally, one query is to get all the posts by Anthony. So let me just run this really quick. And we see the results of the queries down here. Okay, so that's the old style. So for the new style, it's a bit different. Okay, so for the new style, the first thing that I need to do is create an engine. So that's the same as before. It's the exact same function, exact same style. After that, what we can do is we can use this declarative base class and then just inherit from that. And I recommend using a separate base class so you can inherit from declarative base and add any extra settings that you need. I don't need any extra settings, so I'm just putting pass here. And just know that some people like to call base model. So you'll see base as a class name and model. They're both fine. It's just a name, but I'm using base here. We have our first model here, user. It inherits from this base and we have a table name. So that's the same as before. And then we define our first column. So for ID, this is where the major changes come into play. So for ID, I set the name of the attribute ID, and then I use a type hint. So for the type hint, I need to import the mapped class from sqlalchemy.orm, and then I need to put the data type inside the square brackets here. So this type hint both tells SQL Alchemy what this data type is, and also it tells your linter and your type tools, uh, which types are being used for the models when you go to use them in your code. So it has two benefits, but as far as SQL Alchemy goes, the main benefit is it determines the data type of your column if you don't supply any additional information, which we're not saying here. So we're saying that this is an integer. And then another thing it does is it tells you if it's nullable or not. So by default in SQL Alchemy 2, everything is not nullable. Whereas in the previous version of SQL Alchemy, everything was nullable by default. So that's a big difference. So this is going to be not null by default and it has to be not null because it's a primary key. So here on the left-hand side of the equal sign, we have the ID and then the data type. On the right-hand side, we use this mapped column, and then we can supply any additional information that we have to supply to describe the column that we want. So here we're saying that the ID column should be a primary key. So now let's look at the next two columns. So name is going to be a string, so we have to use mapped again. 
And then we can specify the number of characters that are allowed in those strings. So I'm saying 30 characters to match the old example. You don't have to supply this if you don't want to. So you could get away with not having anything here, but I'm just supplying 30 to match the old example. For last login, uh, remember for the old one, the last login was optional, so nullable was true. So to make something nullable true or optional, you bring in the optional class from the Python standard library and you put that inside of mapped and then inside of the optional, you put the data type. So here, last login should be a date time. And then for the posts, we have a relationship. So for posts, uh, we use mapped again, but the data type this time is going to be a list of post classes. And I'll define the post class in a second, but it's gonna be a list of those post classes. And then for the relationship part, the relationship just defines the extra things in the relationship that SQL Alchemy needs to know. So we're saying that this is going to back populate um, an attribute called user. So that's it, I just have the repper here for the user class. For the post class, let's take a look at it. So ID is exactly the same. Title, um, it's a string and it's up to 50 characters and we have a default. So we wanna supply a default of untitled post. Content, we're saying that it is a string, but to be more specific, it's text. So we don't have to supply a number of characters. We're just saying it's the text data type, so it can be as many characters as we need. For user ID, also an integer. And then we have map column here, and the custom thing on this column is this column is a foreign key. So we pass foreign key into here, and the foreign key is gonna be user.id. Finally, we have the relationship. So maps is gonna be user. So this represents the class up here. And remember, list posts represents these post classes. And then the relationship has the back populates posts. And then we have the repper, which is the same idea. So to create everything, we do the same thing, base.metadata.createAll or model.metadata.createAll, depending on the name that you use. And then to create a session, we don't have to use the session maker or anything. We just need to import this session class and we can use the context manager by using session with the engine as the only argument to it. And then we take lowercase session to be the variable inside of the context manager with clause here. So I can create Anthony and Kim. So these are created in the exact same way you instantiate the class to create an object and that ends up being a row in the database. And then you can do session.add for both Anthony and Kim and then session.commit using this session here. So now these should be in the database. Then just creating posts. This is exactly the same as the old version. You create the posts, append them to the users and then just do session.commit. And then for the queries, these are pretty different. So before there was kind of a connection between the database and when you query, so you would always need the session to write a query. You would do session.query and then whatever. So there was like an inherent relationship to the database. For this, the queries are kind of standalone. So you can write the entire query by itself before introducing the database. So I like to use statement as a variable for the queries. You can make this queue, you can make this query, whatever you want. And for the first query, we're just selecting user. So select from user, that's the SQL query that ends up being created. And then we pass this query to session.scalers. Right, so session.scalers will execute this query and then we say like how much of the response we want. So in this case, we want all of it. So session.scalers, with select user dot all will give us all the users. And then I can loop over those users, print them out and print their posts. And this is exactly the same as the older version of SQL Alchemy. We can just loop over the users and print out the information. For the second query, if I wanna get a single user, I do session dot get, I pass in the class first, so the user class, and then I pass in the primary key. So Anthony happens to be user ID one, so I get the Anthony object and then I can print found user Anthony. For the next query, this is a more complicated one. So I'm selecting from user again, but now I wanna add a filter. So after select user, I do dot where, and then inside of where I can say user.name equals Kim. So two equal signs, use the user class and then the attribute and then the actual value I'm looking for in the database, so Kim. So when I execute this by passing it to session.scalers, I can get the first result or one result, whatever your preference is, but I'm using first here. And that gives me Kim. And if Kim doesn't exist, then this will be null. So I can do if Kim and it prints found user Kim. For the last query, this one will be selecting all the posts 
where the post user is Anthony. Notice that this Anthony is an ORM object. It's not just like a, a string or anything like that. So post.user equals Anthony, and then I can do dot order by, and then I want to order by the ID in descending order. So I can do post.id dot descending. This is my query statement. Then I can pass this query over to session.scalers. Session.scalers.all will give me all the posts, and then I can loop through and run them. So let me delete the old database and then let me run the new code. And we see I get the same output as before. It's printing the results of the queries and it's creating everything inside of the database. So the big changes between the old version of SQL Alchemy and the new version of SQL Alchemy are obviously the queries. So you can define queries like independently of the session and then you can pass the query to the session later. So you can put all of your queries in like one part of your code if you like and then pass them to the session later. That is definitely an option. And then the other is using the mapped class to add a type annotation to your attributes to define like how the columns are going to be created, both in terms of the data type and in terms of if they're optional or not. So this is definitely a new pattern, but if you're used to type hinting, then this should be an issue. So if you wanna learn more about type hinting, I have a video here that you can watch to learn how type hinting works in Python.